In under seven minutes, I'll show you how to make my favorite southern sweet potato pie. This recipe has an all-butter pie crust, rich and smooth sweet potato filling, and a quick and easy homemade whipped cream topping. We'll start with the crust. In a mixing bowl, stir together one and a quarter cups all-purpose flour and a half teaspoon salt. Next, add one stick of cubed unsalted butter. And there's no need to soften the butter. You'll get a flakier crust if the butter is cold. Toss together with a large blending fork. And I like to cut the butter into the flour until it resembles pea-sized crumbles. Drizzle in a quarter cup of buttermilk a little bit at a time and quickly mix together until it forms a ragged dough. You can finish mixing by gently pressing together with your hands. For a tender pie crust, try not to overmix the dough. Wrap in plastic wrap, press into a disc, and chill for at least 30 minutes or overnight. You can see in this picture little pockets of butter and marbling, and that's what creates a tender flaky pie crust. You'll want to remove the dough from the refrigerator for about 10 minutes before rolling. On a floured surface, roll the dough slightly larger than a standard 9-inch pie plate. And I love this pastry board. It's the perfect size for rolling pie crust. Just roll into a circle all the way to the edge of the board. I'll have links in the description for some of the things I'm using today. Roll the dough from the inside out towards the edges. And to make sure your dough doesn't stick to the board, just sprinkle a little extra flour underneath. If you see a little place where your dough is starting to crack, just press together and keep rolling. Double check to make sure the crust is larger than your pie plate. And then gently transfer the dough and adjust to center it the best that you can. If the dough accidentally tears, it's not a problem. Just press it together. Fold under the extra dough, forming a nice edge all around the pie. And you can flute the edges by pinching and twisting, or you can make a design by pressing a fork around the edge. It's a good idea to chill the crust for a few minutes while you mix the filling. This helps the edges hold their shape and prevents the crust from slipping down in the pan as it bakes. And next we'll make the filling. Separate two large eggs. In a small mixing bowl, beat two egg whites until soft peaks form and set aside. In another mixing bowl, cream together one stick of softened unsalted butter and one cup of packed brown sugar. Next, add two cups of sweet potato puree. Roasted sweet potatoes work best for this recipe. Add the two egg yolks from earlier, one teaspoon cinnamon, one half teaspoon ginger, one half teaspoon salt, two teaspoons vanilla, and one half cup buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you could use whole milk, half and half, or evaporated milk, but I really like the extra flavor the buttermilk adds. And the final step for the filling, fold in the two beaten egg whites. Even when I was little, I loved homegrown sweet potatoes. I think I'm about five years old in this picture. Pour into a 9-inch unbaked pie shell and bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 25 minutes, depending on your oven. 
Smooth out the filling with a spatula and make a little swirl design on top. And jiggle and tap a couple of times to even out the filling. As the pie bakes, you may need to add a full pie crust shield at some point during baking, and this can help prevent overbrowning around the edge. I like baking in a glass pie plate to keep up with the browning on the bottom of the pie crust. If it's not browning enough on the bottom, just move it to one of the lower racks for a little while. While the pie is cooling, you can make some homemade whipped cream topping. In a mixing bowl, beat one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream until it just starts to thicken. Add two tablespoons of instant white chocolate pudding mix and one half teaspoon vanilla. Continue beating until nice and thick. You can use it right away or chill for later. I really love this topping. It's not too sweet and pairs perfectly with the filling. Share this recipe with your friends and family, and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like printable recipes, visit my website at doublestopbakeshop.com. I really hope you'll try this recipe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.